um, welcome to Ellettsville Christian Church. It has been a busy, crazy summer uh, for me. Um, I've gotten to do a lot of really awesome things. Got to uh, take several kids to camp um, a few weeks ago. Had a great time at camp. Um, I forgot to mention this first service, but one of the people that we took to camp is getting baptized later tonight, so that's awesome. Um, there was a big week of camp uh, that just ended on Friday, and I got a chance to go up Friday and watch three of our sixth graders get baptized on Friday, so that was awesome. <clears throat> uh, several of you took a part of our, our VBS, and it was a really great time. And um, I know that you guys have heard the, the tremendous news that this was my last VBS. Um, and I've had some people reach out and be concerned, like, well, if this is your last VBS, where are you going? I know we hired Becky, where are you going? The answer to that question is nowhere. I am staying exactly where I am. Um, the elders just decided that um, I am really good with teens and youth and I'm okay with kids. And they said, we need to bring in somebody that's really good with uh, children. And so I am so thankful that Becky starts tomorrow because today is my last day as a children's minister and I'm celebrating by preaching. So, um, and, but the, the reason that we're, we're here, the reason that all of us in the Target Dayton shirts are here is we, um, you go ahead and put the picture up. I'm remembering the order. The first service, I got the order completely wrong, and Seth probably fixed it to go with what I did last service, and now I'm going back. Um, I like to keep Seth on his toes. Um, we, at the beginning of the summer, literally graduation was on Saturday. We left on Sunday. We took 14 kids and four adults. Um, the one on the left with the van behind it, that's the before picture. The after picture on the right, you'll notice that none of the adults are in the, at the after picture because we were all too tired to get up onto the porch to get into the picture. Uh, we had an absolutely awesome and amazing uh, week with these kids in Dayton, Ohio. Um, but we had this practice during our time at Dayton that we would have, um, we would have a time of worship, um, Austin and Jalen. Jalen was the one up here dancing and stuff during um, worship time. Jalen did an awesome job of coming up and joining our worship team this morning. Um, I hope that she continues to come up and use her gifts and skills because she did a great job this morning. Uh, but they would lead us in a time of worship, and then we would have what we like to call silly songs with Alan. Um, if you guys don't know Alan Martindale, he's a little bit of a goof, and he would stand up and lead us in a song. So we are going to, we're going to have silly songs with Alan, but he couldn't be with us because he's on a Boy Scout uh, camping trip. So we decided to film this. Now, this is going to be a, a call and response thing. So he's going to say something, and you have to say it back. So without further ado... Silly Songs with Alan. This is a repeat after me song. This is a repeat after me song. A badilly bop. I've got to get back to my block. I've got to get back to my block. With these pizzas in my hand. With these pizzas in my hand. I've got to be the pizza man. A badilly bop. A badilly bop. I've got to get back to my block. I've got to get back to my block. With these basketballs in my hand. With these basketballs in my hand. I've got to be the Michael Jordian. I've got to be the Michael Jordian. A badilly bop. A badilly bop. I've got to get back to my block. With these electrical cords in my hand. With these electrical cords in my hand. I've got to be the electrician. I've got to be the electrician. Thank you, thank you. Have a good night. Jake and Pam, I can just see the pride in your face at watching your son. Uh, we had um, an absolutely amazing uh, time. We had a lot of, we had a lot of fun. Uh, on our trip, because uh, sometimes we as Christians, we forget that, that we can have fun, we can be silly and do stuff and just enjoy um, God's creation and, and God's sense of humor, because God has a tremendous sense of humor. I mean, he gave us Dan. Um, so we would always have some fun, and then we would get into, um, we'd, we'd worship, we'd have some fun, and then we'd get into our time of 
of digging into God's word, and we're going to do that. So I'm going to pray, and then Jennifer's going to come up and read our scripture for us this morning. So let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you so much uh, for being the God that you are, that you, you love us and provided humor and love and compassion and encouragement. Uh, we just thank you for all of that, and we thank you for the, the opportunity that we had to go on this trip and pray that you'd be with us right now, that you would uh, be with us as we retell the stories of our trip, and that we can share how you worked in our lives. So God, we thank you for what you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. But when the Son of Man comes in in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep in his right hand and the goats in his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever um, see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality? or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of these least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those to the left and say, away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepare for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you are refusing to help me and they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. We, uh, as the adults, uh, decided several years ago, we've been, we had this tradition of going to CIY, um, taking kids to CIY, and we kind of decided we wanted to find an opportunity for our kids to live out their faith a chance for our kids to go and to give back, to feed those that are hungry, uh, to, to care for those that are sick or in prison. And so we, we were very intentional. We said, we want to create... Hey, whoever muted this, great job. Um, we wanted to create an opportunity for people to, um, to live out their faith. And so we decided we were going to take this trip uh, to Dayton, Ohio. And we, we were very um, particular. We picked... Um, a group called Leader Treks, and we picked them because they do a great job of um, taking us in and teaching us how to do ministry. This wasn't just come and you're going you're gonna to build or you're going to do. It was, hey, we're going to teach you how to do this so you can take it back home with you. Um, so uh, one of the days that we were there, we worked with an organization called No Longer Strangers. It was actually the house that we were staying in. Um, they Uh, cared for the African refugees that were in the area because Dayton, Ohio, for some reason is just a a, a place where a lot of African refugees come. And so we got the opportunity to work with them. It was, it was fun that we'd be, we'd be in the house, you know, preparing for supper or lunch or something. And people would just be coming in and out of the house, talking to the people, the the ministry that owned the house and talking with them. Uh, We got a chance to work with some African refugees and we're going to, you'll hear some, some stories about that later, but it was just a great uh, opportunity to live out our faith. Uh, then another day we went to a place called Gospel Missions that um, in Dayton, Ohio, for several years, um, churches had started to notice that their congregations were changing. And so unfortunately, a lot of churches moved out to the suburbs and leaving a void. And Gospel Missions kind of came in and said, 
uh, we don't want to see a, a large group of people go without hearing the gospel. And so they, they bought an old church building and they came in and they've, they've been doing this. They actually have service every day of the week where people can come in and hear the word of God. Um, they have a kitchen as a part of their um, church and they have restaurants from around Dayton that will just donate food to them and they will serve meals to the people in their community. Um, it was awesome. We got a chance to work with them. We got a chance to prepare some meals, uh, to do some weeding, to uh, wash some vans, to, to do some of the work that they couldn't do so that we could free them up to do some more missions work. And then um, the last group that we got to work with, the, where we get the shirts, uh, was Target Dayton. It was a ministry that came in to Dayton and saw a large homeless community, a large uh, population that just needs Jesus. And so they are very um, evangelistic forward. Like when we went there, um, the first thing we did was uh, we got prayed for and then we got to pray together and then we went out in groups and door hung the community with invitations to come to service and we got to pray for each house as we put a door hanger on their, their door and that was really cool. Then we got to come back and hand out free hot dogs and free ice cream to people that were driving past. It was a really awesome experience um, that we got to do this. Um, so we decided that we wanted to take some time and kind of share um, what our trip was. And so we're going to start with talking about why people decided to come on this trip in the first place. So Peaches is going to come up and talk about why I forced him to come on this trip. I'm not going to lie. I'm winging all of this because originally this wasn't my part. So bear with me. Um, originally this trip, I, I was definitely forced by Matt to be here. Uh, but at the end, I think all of us, whether we were either forced or just wanted to grow with God, we all came out as a new person and we all, I think we found our calling with God because I feel like either we knew God or we were, we know of him and we went to church, but I feel like after the trip, we really um, had a relationship with him. I feel like everything kind of changed. We all grew together and as we're probably going to talk about in a little bit, normally around the day four or five, everyone gets tired of each other, but we all, we all were crying and hugging each other and loving on each other that day is, and we all just grew because of the power of God, and I think that was amazing, so. Um, one, some of the really cool things that happened on this trip is we went to go do things, and we actually ended up working with people in the community. So Chris is gonna come up and talk about his experience with working with the community. So, we went to Dayton, and we originally went there to go and disciple to the people, and one of our missions was to go out, and there was this fence in this neighborhood that needed to be taken out and moved, so there's people like Logan and I, we're built for work, we're built for going at it at full speed, and then there's people like Peaches, Evie, Lauren, and Jalen, who, they love people with everything inside of them, just go all people, and... Logan and I were working on the fence, and I, I look over at Logan, and I go, hey, there's some children over there. I think that's pretty cool that they're coming out and looking at this. But then, all of a sudden, I'm like, one of those children is peaches. <laughs> 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 and then Jalen went over, and then Evie and Lauren, and then they all just started playing with the children. Like, at one point, we have this kid named Jacob. He's probably one of the fastest kids here, but when he would have races with the children, he would purposely go slow to make sure that the children would win. And it was just, it was great when we went out there. It was also fun seeing my massive hunk of a child who could easily carry a piece of fence by himself. And he's picking up this piece of fence to carry it. And this little kid walks up and goes, I help, I help. And Chris humbled himself and it made it more difficult for Chris to let this kid help, but he let the kid help and, and carried it. And it was just the, the way that the kids, we went to tear down a fence and ended up hanging out with the community. And at one point, the, um, a couple of our kids latched on to a couple of the babies that were there and like were holding them and they like, they cried when they had to give the babies up. The babies didn't cry. The girls cried that they had to put the babies down. And um, the mother of those, um, those babies brought out a case of water and goes, hey, it's, it's hot out. You guys are working hard. Here's some water. 
uh, she shared her love with us because we were sharing our love with her. It was really cool. Uh, one of the days that we were there, um, <clears throat> we were handing out hot dogs and we got a chance to meet a guy named Carlos and Logan and Liz are going to come up and share about Carlos. So when we were giving out hot dogs to these people, one of the guys, like one of the first guys that came up, he just came in as normal. We handed him his hot dog and kind of prayed over him and he walked away. And then a little bit later, I was standing there working on stuff and I look over and he's back again. And he was just kind of standing aside. He had a grocery bag in his hand and he just kind of looked, he was watching. I decided I was going to go up to him and I just talked to him. I said, hey, what's your story, man? What are you doing here? And he told me everything. It's it was a rough story. He was an addict. He didn't have a home. That grocery bag was all his possessions that he owned. And he was still, he said that he wanted to get closer to God. He was, he felt like he was doing wrong and he wanted to improve himself. And I don't think I've ever seen a man that was more desperate to get to know God and get to be with him, even in that situation. And so I took him and hugged him, brought him in to the group um, talked with him about it, gave, gave him a Bible so he could have something to read and learn more about God. I introduced him to some people like Liz and a few of the other counselors, and we wrote a letter to him basically promising him that he was going to get better and he was going to help. And I think Liz can go into more detail about that letter that we had for him. We uh, wrote a letter saying that he was going to go to church and he was going to get help and be active in this process of getting better. And everyone in the group that was sitting there with him, we all signed the letter. Everyone was in tears the entire time. Not There was no one with a dry eye, even Carlos, the man we were talking to. So. So normally when you go on a trip like this, after about three or four days, you start to get on each other's nerves and you start to be like, when do we get to go home? Um, that did not happen with this, this group. It, it was like after three or four days. Um, it was funny. We would, we would have our worship time and all the kids would go upstairs to get ready for bed and all that. And as adults, we had to stay down for our adult meetings afterwards. And we would get done with our adult meetings and be like 10 minutes till bedtime and we would go upstairs and there was this hallway that connected all the rooms and there was just this big mass of kids just sitting in the hallway, talking, joking around, having fun, uh, getting close with each other. It was just an awesome experience. And to, to talk more about the closeness of the group, we have Evie and Lauren. Um, yeah, so I think I can speak for all of us whenever I say this, but I know that for me and everyone personally, we all got a lot close, closer on this trip because of the connections that were able to be made throughout God and throughout everything that we had going on during the trip. Um, we did make a lot of great connections even with the friends we already had from the youth group that went on the mission trip. And um, when we went to Target Dayton Ministries, one of my best friends was having a really hard time and um, I saw that they were kind of sitting off the side and yeah, we were supposed to be communicating and you know, going with the community and everything, but I saw that, he, that they were kind of sitting off to the side and I was like, okay, well, you know, what can I do to help? And that also brought like a sense of closeness even though they're one of my best friends and have been for a minute. And by having a hard time, she means that Lauren was sitting off ugly crying <laughs> I didn't need to, but it was fun. Um, there, was, there, was a lot of, there were a lot of tears. There were a lot of becoming very vulnerable and opening up, and there was a lot of closeness that came because of that. Uh, and one of the areas that they did this is something specific that Leader Trex does, where at the end of every night, we would give um, what we call an encouragement bead to someone. And so Liz is going to come up and share about the encouragement bead. Um, the encouragement beads were a great way to acknowledge the growth and skills that people were developing over the trip. Um, we had four different beads, one for leadership, one for service, one for risk-taking, and one for compassion. So at, during the um, bead time, we would pass around a bag with these beads in it, and everyone would grab one and think of one person they wanted to highlight that night. 
So every single person would hand out a bead for something that we saw happening that day. Every, every time we were supposed to say, um, today I saw God working in your life through, and then we would describe an action that they did that we saw. And it was just, it was a great way for all of us to acknowledge each other and acknowledge our growth with God. <clears throat> Throughout this week, the kids demonstrated a lot of, of growth in leadership and their relationship with God. And so we thought we would bring up the biggest kid in youth group to discuss the growth in the kids. So Andy. So like uh, Matt or somebody said, Matt did it the first service, but Wednesday, you know, on a mission trip, you're ready to just pull your hair out and snap at everyone. Um, these group of kids did not do that at all, and it's truly amazing to see. Um, we took 14, 15 kids to Dayton, and that's what they were, were kids trying to find Jesus and follow God's plan, and uh, by the end of it, they truly found God and found their purpose and calling. Uh, on Wednesday or Thursday, we, while we was working with Dayton, our target Dayton, they went to a, or we did a prayer walk where we walked around the neighborhoods and I had Devin and Peaches. And at first I had to encourage them and Matt called us at noon and we are supposed to be back at the bus by noon. And we missed that completely. Like we was just out doing our thing. And so we was booking it back and Devin was like, peaches, peaches, peaches. So I looked behind me and peaches is like half a block away, sitting there praying for this guy and asking him how he can pray for him and just being a light to that guy without even being told. And here we were, it was like having to get back to the bus and peaches didn't care about that. Um, and then while we were at Target Dayton Ministries, we was passing out hot dogs and ice cream and it was truly a blessing to see each one of these kids grow their faith in God, uh, why they were passing out the hot dogs and even ice cream with Carlos. And there was a couple other homeless people that would just come and sit on the steps. And normally with kids, you have to encourage them to go talk and interact with the people that they don't know. Um, but I don't think one adult had to do that in, on that trip. They just did it you know, by their own initiatives. And it is truly amazing to see um, these kids grow their faith, grow in God, and not only that, but their leadership skills. Um, and like I said, we took 14, 15 kids and we brought back, you know, young adults that have a good head on their shoulders, so. So when we think about you know, the scripture that we read at the beginning and, and that it's our job to go out and to clothe and to, to help the sick and the homeless, it really, comes down to, uh, it really comes down to the fact that we need to love, that we need to be loving those around us. And uh, as I was thinking about this and preparing this, I, I really focused kind of on two scriptures. And it's funny that I keep focusing on one of these scriptures because after four years, I finally decided to change the name of youth group. Um, that we are going to start referring to youth group as the five because it stands for five words, loving God and loving others. And it comes from the scripture in Matthew 22. Uh, Jesus is being questioned by some people. They're trying to trap him. And this is what he says. Um, the, the two most important commandments, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all of the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. That's our job as Christians. We're to love God and we're to love others. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, and, and the kids really had the opportunity to express that uh, while we were in Dayton. And there was a couple stories that just kind of jumped out at me um, about loving God and loving others on this trip is that um, we... We were working every day. Um, we had jobs that we had to do, and every day rain was on the forecast. And it would be like, rain was there, but it just didn't rain for us when we were out doing stuff. 
And then Wednesday comes along, and Wednesday was a day that we were going to go into downtown Dayton, and we were going to go on this mission race. It was this competition. Um, it was kind of a fun day that we had planned, and it poured. Our whole day is just walking around downtown Dayton, and it rained like cats and dogs. We were soaking wet. The first task we were given was we were given these like eight pieces of paper that we had to tape together to make a map. I told you it was raining and they gave us paper maps. So my job, I had a rain jacket on. My job was I had the map inside my rain jacket and as we were walking around and people would ask to see the map, I would open my jacket and say, I'm the map, I'm the map, I'm the map. Um, and we're, we're out in this just downpour. We are, my team is just miserable. My socks are soaking wet. Every part of me is soaking wet. And we have this one person on our team that we're all miserable, and Jalen is just walking around like, do you see these pretty paintings all over the buildings? Look at all these flowers that are all over the place. And I'm like, Jalen, I love you, but you're getting on my nerves. I'm wet. I'm like miserable, and you're being all happy and stuff. And so we, we go, and it comes time for lunch, and we're sitting down to eat our... Um, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch and stuff, and we're sitting under this overhang, and I am miserably wet. And Jalen says, you know, I'm just so glad that if it was going to rain, it rained today. I'm like, what are you talking about? Why would you be happy that it's raining today? She goes, because it's raining today when we're not having to do any work. It's not interrupting the work that we came here to do. It's like, man, the 16-year-old is teaching me how to love others. Because the day that we were just supposed to go out and have some fun to learn some stuff, it rained, which made it possible for that every day we had to go work, it was beautiful weather. She understood and she was loving, she was loving others that whole time. Then the day we're, we're at Target Dayton and the first thing we do at Target Dayton is we're gonna go pray for people. We're, we're handing out, we're putting door hangers on doors and praying for those houses. And Evie says, I have never prayed out loud for someone ever in my life. Um, we, she had just been baptized a couple months before that. And she's like, I've never done anything like this. And we're like, it's really easy. We'll teach you how to do it. It's fine. You're just having a conversation with God about someone else. It's okay. So she got the opportunity to, as she was door hanging, she got the opportunity to pray out loud for other people. And she was just so excited. We came back and we're handing out hot dogs to people. Like we were just standing on the street with a speaker telling people that they come get free hot dogs. And I'm, I, God decided that I needed to be humbled on this trip and I spent the entire trip with a messed up back. Um, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't really help out with a lot of stuff because I was just in a lot of pain. So these kids are all out doing this stuff and I'm sitting on the stairs watching all of this. And I look and there is little Miss Evie, I've never prayed out loud for a single person, running up to people as they come to pick up their hot dogs or their ice cream. She is running up and accosting them like, how can I pray for you? So there's people standing, holding a hot dog in their hand and a Coke in their other hand with Evie, got her arm around them, praying for people. She has never prayed for anyone a day in her life. And now she is running up and tackling people to pray for them because she found a way to express her love of God and her love of others. She found a way to do it. And it was really cool to watch. And like we've mentioned, when you go on trips like this, after a while, you get on each other's nerves. And uh, that really didn't happen on this trip. And I think it's because um, God wanted us to grow. And when I think about this, I keep thinking about John 13, uh, where Jesus says to his disciples, so now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. We had the opportunity to just love on each other and to love on the people around us. While we're on this, this race where it's raining and we're all miserable, we were in three different teams on this race and my team um, got lost. It wasn't the map's fault, I, I did my job. Um, but we, we, kinda got, we kinda got lost and I knew we were lost because we were going one direction and the other groups were going the other direction and I thought, we're lost. <laughs> We don't, we don't know what we're doing. And it came to a point where we realized that we had completely lost the race. When I was looking at the scores on the race, it was 3,000, 3,500. It's like, yeah, we've, we've lost this race. And our, 
um, our leader got really discouraged. Uh, she was very upset because we were all very competitive and we wanted to win and we realized there's no way we're going to win this race. And she was breaking down, ugly crying and everything. And it's just not a good experience. And so I was trying to build up my team and build her up. And I just said, you know, guys, this is about more than just this race. It's okay. Um, I looked at, at Devin, who was on my team, and I said, hey, Devin, are you upset that we're going to lose this race? And Devin had to, um, he had to lie a little bit. He goes, no, I'm not upset that we're going to lose this race. Um, you weren't happy we were losing until you got a snow cone. I didn't really care. So he was... He had to like, yeah, it's okay, we're going to lose this race. Jacob, who is an ultra competitive person, he had to kind of like, yeah, it's okay if we're going to lose this. I said, hey, Jalen, are you okay that we're going to lose this race? She stops walking, turns around and looks at our leader and says, this is about more than us winning a race. It's about us growing together. It's about us learning about God and learning and to love each other. She loved in a way that none of the rest of us learned. And again, I got schooled on how to love by a 16-year-old. It was a really humbling experience, let me tell you. Then that night, we got to sit down. And at the end of every night, we would sit down and do the encouragement beads. Our encouragement bead session that night was, I am not joking, four hours long. That we sat for four hours just loving on each other, talking about how we've seen God at work in each other's lives and stuff, we, we didn't have Kleenexes. We were using rolls of toilet paper. We went through three rolls of toilet paper in those four hours, just sitting around. I was with a group of four adults and 14 kids, and we were crying with each other, loving on each other. It was an amazing experience. It was an amazing time for us just to get together and to, to share the love of God with each other. We took these, these kids on this trip, and like Andy said, they came back as young adults. They came back ready to love. And it's been fun to see the results of that in youth group. You know, I've seen um, kids going up to people they wouldn't normally talk to at youth group and having conversations with them, making sure that they're feeling welcome and engaged in the group, and it's been really cool to see. It's been really cool to see discussions of, hey, this is what I'm gonna do when school starts back up. This is how I'm gonna share that. Uh, it, it was a, an amazing experience, and I am so glad that I got to take part in that with these kids. And we're going we're gonna to end our time talking about the love of God. Austin is going to come up and share um, our communion thoughts about how God has loved us and how we get a chance uh, to thank him. So while Jesus and his disciples were in the upper room, Jesus took the bread and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples he said, this represents my body, which is broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup and blessed it and said that this was his blood that was shed for, shed for you. And any time that we do this, we do it in remembrance of him and his sacrifice because he was beaten, lashed, spit on. And then finally, after all of that cruelty, he was hung on the cross to die. And he did all of that for us. And there's one simple reason that he did that. It's because he loves us. So let's take a moment to pray before we do communion, and then we'll sing a few more songs. Uh, pray to that loving God. God, I thank you for bringing us all here today. I thank you that uh, we were able to go on this mission trip. And I thank you that we were able to uh, share our experience with these people. Uh, I pray that uh, they got something out of it and that they can also go out into their communities and just love you and love the people in our community and just people everywhere. Um, I pray for any possible prayer requests that are out there today. Um, if anybody's going through hardships or anything, or even if people are having amazing lives right now, um, I just thank you and praise you, and uh, please help everyone in here to have an amazing week. Amen.